Today I've got a book that I want to share with you guys. This is called Magnitude Solitude, The Photographs of Dave Heath. This is an incredible book. In fact, I think it is probably one of the most incredible photography books that I've bought in the last couple of years. And I want to share this with you and I will link it up in the show description if you guys are interested in getting a copy for yourself. But I want to talk about Dave Heath because Dave Heath is a photographer that most people are not familiar with and I think he's a photographer that everybody should be familiar with. Um, Dave is a, it was part of the New York photography scene in the 1950s and 1960s, which included people like W. Eugene Smith and Robert Frank. And I think what's important to understand is that Dave is a little bit younger than those guys, and he was actually influenced by their work, and that had a great deal of impact on his development as a photographer. The other thing that I think is important to understand is Dave's upbringing in his childhood, because he did not have it easy. Uh, Dave was born in 1931 in Philadelphia, and both of his parents had abandoned him by the age of four. His grandparents then put him into a series of Jewish orphanages that he grew up in, and having only one parent Jewish, he stated that he never really felt a sense of home or belonging, and in fact, by the time he was 10, he started getting into trouble. And oddly enough, what got him interested in photography was looking at magazine spreads and the photo essays that were coming out at that time, and in particular in this book, he cites that there was one of them that was a photo essay on the growing, I guess, epidemic of orphanages and children without parents in the United States. He said that through the photographs and through the essay, it was one of the first times he really felt a connection that he belongs to something. And it was a part, somebody like kind of figured out who he was. And through the help of a mentor that he had at the time, he built his first camera and started taking pictures. This is really important, I think, when you start looking at Dave's work in the context of mid-century photography, particularly that New York school, because some of the common themes that you're gonna see in Dave's work are things like uh, solitude and loneliness, also contrasted with happiness and relationships and love. And then you also see common themes of motherhood and children as well. And I think that's I think that's important because I think it makes sense coming from his background and his upbringing. The other thing I want to say about Dave Heath, though, is despite being dealt a pretty bad hand early on in life, he made it work and he achieved the success that he wanted no matter what. And it's a very inspiring story, I think. And I think it's one of the things that just makes Dave so magnificent. So I do have a personal story that I want to share with you guys about Dave Heath. I'm going to do that at the end of the video. But right now, I want to sit down and look at some of the work of Dave Heath. Okay, so the book that I'm using here is called Multitude Solitude, The Photographs of Dave Heath, and I mentioned earlier that I think this is one of the best photography books that I've purchased in years, and let me explain why. First of all, the printing quality of the book is excellent. Um, it is outstandingly reproduced. The images in here are absolutely wonderful. Also worth noting is that Dave Heath is a little bit more obscure of a photographer than somebody like W. Eugene Smith or Henri Cartier-Bresson. So having said that, um, the obscurity is that it's not like these have print, printed a lot of other places or that you're going to find large collections online. And so it makes the book somewhat unique in that respect. Um, also in here, and I think this is worth noting, is the probably, I would say, kind of the height of Dave's career was this book that he produced called A Dialogue with Solitude. And I want to talk about this when we get into the work here. It is reproduced here in its entirety. In fact, that is where this book gets its name, Multitude Solitude, because it is not only a accurate reproduction of Dialogue with Solitude, but it does contain um, many other images. In fact, this is a career retrospective, which is really nice as well. Also, the text in this book, the intro is absolutely fabulous. It gives a full biography of Dave, which I'm really kind of skimming over because there's a lot to it. But there is an entire chapter in here called The Printmaker, and Dave was an amazing printer as well as a photographer. In fact, by the time he moved to New York City and became acquainted with W. Eugene Smith, he really took his printing skills to a whole nother level, and they talked quite a bit about his printing techniques in here and give some wonderful example images. Uh, at one point, I know that hey, Dave Heath was, was hired to do the printing for an entire exhibition of Robert Frank's work, and so I think that's particularly worth noting. Um, but Dave was particularly known for a technique that Eugene Smith also used, um, where he would actually bleach the highlights. And so a lot of them in here, and I don't know if you're going to pick this up on the video or not, but they give you an actual scan of the negative so you can see kind of what the tonality is like just natural off the negative, and then also some of the treatments that are done here as well. And like this image is a classic example where the original image, you do see some stuff in the background, but what Dave is 
was able to do with this technique is really burn that background in and, and expose it so it really goes completely dark and then come back over at the top with a bleaching process on the face to make it appear white. And so you end up with these really beautiful high contrast images that have a way of what he was going for was isolating the subjects from the background. And I think that's really important uh, to note. And then finally, and I think this is amazing in here too, is there's a whole chapter in here um, of what they're calling these early maquettes. And this is really interesting. This is where I want to start by looking at Dave's work. So they're, what they're calling a maquette in here are basically handmade books that Dave made himself. And he would use these as portfolio pieces and as study pieces. And he was very fascinated. Um, as I mentioned earlier, he was really inspired by the whole idea of the photo essay and the work that was being done in magazines at that time, particularly W. Eugene Smith. And so what Dave Heath was really interested in were the relationships between images. In fact, in the intro to this book, it very poetically uh, states that um, he was talking about the, the space between the images, the white line between photographs as being the third dimension. And of course, they're not specifically referring to that line, but they're talking about the third dimension and how images work together. And so even in these really early maquettes, you see this in a study. The, um, his first one was called Three. This is from 1952, so this was pretty early. And basically, he would paste the photos into these books. He would cut holes in the side, and they were held together and bound by those plastic binders. And the, what you see in Three are basically relationships of three images. There's usually an establishing image that's fairly large and two smaller images that work together. And it's early work, so his style is not as refined yet. And it's mostly people sitting on trains. It's very much street photography. Um, there are some wonderful pieces with the department store Santa Claus down here. But you start to see that, that his process and way of thinking is coming out even in these early works. And as far as reproducing the maquettes, and I mentioned this book is very complete, there are a ton of them in here. And as I said, he would use these as portfolios. Um, he, there's a story about how he basically just walked right into the Museum of Modern Art in New York and asked to see Steichen. And uh, Steichen sat down with him and was pretty brutally honest honest, as Dave puts it, and says that he didn't think his work was at the level it should be yet, but he did show a good faith gesture and actually purchased one of his prints, which I think is kind of cool. And so you see a lot of these early maquettes from the various places he lived, uh, Philadelphia, Chicago, and then New York City as well. And when Dave was first starting out, he was drafted into service in the military. And I want to start with some of those images here. And what's interesting about Dave Heath, and remember, he was very much influenced by photojournalism and what his heroes, such as um, uh, mainly W. Eugene Smith and others were doing. But what's interesting is when you normally think of wartime photographs um, of conflict, you think of a lot of soldiers in the battlefield and you know you see that illustrated. But what Dave gives us is a very different view. Now the story is, is when Dave went to the military, uh, he went into Korea and when he got there, his camera actually broke. And so he didn't shoot for the first few months that he was there. It wasn't until the peace agreement happened uh, in Korea that he finally was able to save enough money uh, to replace his broken, I believe it was a Kodak Retina with a Nikon S rangefinder. And he began to take these images. And so what these images show us are basically his military uh, comrades, uh, but they're at night in the tent and they express this real raw emotion that is what Dave's work is all about. And that raw emotion comes out uh, in the in the beginning, he was talking about uh, the sense of loneliness and the sense of not having a home, a band of brothers, a stranger in a strange land. And I really love how that, that is put together. And that's what you see in these images. Um, in fact, um, I think one of the best ones is this one. And Dave talks about this in the intro to the book and mentions this is a friend of his. And he was feeling rather homesick. And Dave took some pictures. And at that time, he didn't have access to a darkroom. So he would send them off to Tokyo to have them processed. And he would get prints back. And when he saw the print, he realized in some ways that it was in many ways a reflected self-portrait on the way he was feeling as well. And he makes note in here that the way the figures sprawled out, it's almost like a study with the Christ figure or something like that. And I think it's really beautiful. But the way these light, the light works in these, the, the high contrast, and, and what you're seeing is really, um, you know, this raw emotion that's being dug out of a situation. And that's really what you're going to see Dave Heath going for in all of his work. Um, you know, a lot of the, the work that you see done in Philadelphia, where he's from, uh, even moving into Chicago, you see street portraits, but they're always 
trying to bring out an emotion. And I think that's why his style probably sits somewhere between, I would say, W. Eugene Smith and maybe Robert Frank. He's not going for these classical types of composition necessarily, um, like you see Henri Cartier-Bresson doing. Um, it's more about how do you isolate and what's coming from the figure and how is a portrait treated. And I think that's really important to understand in Dave's work. Um, when he got back from Korea, um, he used his GI Bill funding to go to school and started studying in Pennsylvania and wanted to transfer to the program at Art Institute of Chicago. And upon transferring, he found out that his funding would not cover the transfer. And so, you know, Dave, used to coming from nothing and doing whatever it takes to get what he, he wants to get out of the situation, started taking a day job and taking night classes and started to study. And the period in Chicago is where I think you see Dave develop a lot as a photographer, but he's really hungry and he wants it bad. And eventually he decides to move to New York. And that was the amazing part is within, you know, months of moving to New York, he's become friends with some of the major photographers of that time. He was taking classes with W. Eugene Smith, which are talked about in the intro to this book and talked about Eugene's process and what he was like as a teacher. And Eugene Smith's advice to street photography was you have to prepare to be selfish as an artist. You're trying to get what it is that you want. And it's a difficult thing for a a lot of people to do is is be selfish behind the lens and anyway very interesting and I think it was great and a lot of these early pictures from New York again street fo fo portraits essentially uh, but really beautifully rendered really well done beautiful high contrast and really going for pulling this emotion out of people and I think that's what's really important the pinnacle of Dave's career as I mentioned um, is his seminal work a dialogue with solitude and this is an interesting story as well because, as I mentioned, Dave was not working as a photojournalist. So he did not, he was not employed by magazines. He didn't freelance for them. He took odd jobs wherever he could. He washed dishes. He worked in restaurants. Uh, occasionally he would assist um, commercial photography shoots. But he really had something in mind he wanted to do that had a pureness to it that he wanted to go for, and that was this. And Dialogue with Solitude was, was a masterpiece of a book that he put together. And the idea for this came about around 1961, and it took four years to see to completion. Um, by himself, he went and found a printer, found a distributor, the whole thing. And he would make those maquette mock-ups. In fact, the whole book is based on an early one of those done in Philadelphia and then expanded on to include more current work. But that was his goal was to get this book out. And a lot of his friends acted as editors on this. He ran early versions of this by people like Dean Arbus and Gary Winogrand and Edward Steichen. And, and so that kind of input went into this. But it's, it's a wonderful book. And you also have to realize, too, because Dave had training as a designer uh, beginning in Philadelphia. But the way it's laid out as well, with lots of negative space and maybe an image put down here in the corner. And the way we see these is they begin with the, with the image of the child with the, with the dirty face. And we move into here into these kind of landscape oriented images that start to bring us into the book. And there's a lot of quiet that's created with the negative space. And I think that was what's really cool about them reproducing the book as it was um, this wonderful reflection shot that someone acts as an abstract in the crack. And then we start moving into portraits as we, as we move along. This one from New York City in Washington Square, circa 1960. And you're going to see some people who are very famous, Allen Ginsberg in this one. Uh, this is a very uh, famous portrait also, Stranger in Washington Square. And I have seen prints of this in person, and it is just beautiful. Uh, Dave really was an outstanding printer, and the, the quality of this book, the reproductions, are fabulous. But A Dialogue with Solitude was really, in many ways, his magnum opus, and it was inspired largely by um, books that he was influenced by, namely Henri Cartier-Bresson's The Decisive Moment, which he had seen years before, as well as Robert Frank's The Americans. And a lot of the themes that I talked about that you see in Dave's work are obviously shown here. Um, a lot of times you see see a sense of solitude, isolation, uh, the expressions on the people in these images, uh, it, they convey a loneliness at times. Uh, other times almost violence, like these two kids fighting behind the wall or this fight going down here in Chicago from 1956. And uh, more longingness and despair, but then Dave does contrast that because it, it, at certain points you do get different emotions like you know this couple laughing here or you know as we get into it and embrace and so this kind of establishment of relationships versus that contrast of loneliness is a big part of Dave's work uh, as I mentioned earlier too motherhood and, and children are also a large part of it too uh, but just an amazing body of work um, I think Dave was was absolutely fantastic this book is a pretty complete retrospective and it does contain some of the Polaroid work that he did later as well as these color plates of digital images that he did and these are all more recent these are 2000 
2004, 2005, that one's 2003. And it's a really wonderful book. And Dave, as I mentioned, he's one of those guys who, for a number of reasons, I think kind of fell into obscurity. I think part of Part of why is because he was so driven with, with his own unique vision of what he wanted to see with photographs and the way he wanted to see them produced. And he was not interested in working for magazines or doing commercial publication work. So he really kind of came at this just through being an artist. And I think that that's part of the beauty of his work. And I really think it's cool that in recent years he has come back to light again and through things like the Philadelphia Museum of Art has actually been given a place in the history of photography. I want to take a second and give a shout out to our sponsor today, who are the awesome folks over at Squarespace.com. If you're not familiar with Squarespace, they provide everything you need to build an amazing website, portfolio, or online store. If you head over to Squarespace.com, you can sign up for a free trial, which will allow you to kind of play around and see what Squarespace is all about. You start with their award-winning templates, and everything in the template is customizable. The typeface, the layout, the colors, everything you need to make it your own. Also cool about Squarespace is the amazing back-end system that comes with it which couldn't make it easier to build your content in your website. Basically, if you can drag and drop a folder of images off of your computer onto your web browser and drag and drop to sort them around, you can build an online portfolio. Squarespace.com is a wonderful solution for your next project. And if you decide after the free trial that you want to subscribe, I can save you 10% off your initial order if you use offer code AOP on checkout. Once again, that is squarespace.com and use offer code AOP on checkout to save an additional 10%. And I want to give a special shout out to the folks at Squarespace for once again sponsoring another episode of The Art of Photography. I hope you guys have found this interesting. Dave is a fabulous photographer and for many years kind of fell into obscurity until recently when the Philadelphia Museum of Art did a major retrospective of his work, which I think was really neat and really significant in that not only did he grow up in Philadelphia, but that was one of the museums that he liked to go to as a child. And so for them to uh, bring his work back to the, uh, the world stage again, I think is really important. I think he fell into obscurity for a number of reasons. As I mentioned, Dave was not published. He did not want to work for magazines, and so he kept odd jobs to really have creative control over his vision, which I think is important. But I think also, by the time we get into the 1970s and 1980s, styles start to change, trends in art change, and what was street photography or photojournalism goes a little bit out of fashion. And I think once we start to kind of bring that back and remember it for what it was, I think the people who were published in magazines like W. Eugene Smith, uh, Robert Frank, those guys have a little more precedence, and I think that may be a little bit of why, it's just a guess on my part, of why Dave has fallen a little bit into obscurity, but it's really nice to see people like Philadelphia Museum of Art bring his work back to the public attention again. I want to share a quick personal story about Dave Heath that happened recently, and so many of you know that I'm working on the Artist Series right now which is a series of videos that I want to do on living artists and I'm really pulling myself out of them. I'm just directing them and I want them to be little short pieces on living photographers. And so when I started the project, uh, one of the first things I did is I just brainstormed a list of, you know, if I could just get anyone to be on this, who would it be? And then we'll start from there. And of course, Dave Heath is on that list and he was really near the top of that list because Dave is a photographer because he has been somewhat obscure in recent years. There's not a lot of stuff that's been done on him and he's up in years and I think those are two reasons why he would be a priority. So a lot of times when you go about contacting photographers to see if they would be interested in the project, it can be a long process because it's not like they're in the yellow pages and you just call them up. Um, so what I did was I knew a photography dealer in New York that I had a contact with and I reached out to him and said, hey, I'd love to have Dave on the show and this is what I'm doing. He emailed me back, he said, yeah, he said, you should do it. He said, I would contact this curator at this museum. So I sent an email to this individual. And I didn't know whether I'd hear back or not. And maybe about a week later, I get an email from Dave Heath and about blew me away. And I opened it up and Dave was very nice. And he apologized and said that the project sounded great, but he was going to decline the invitation. He said, I feel like I'm up in years. I feel like an old man rambling on and I want the work to speak for itself. And he included a little self-portrait, which I thought was really cool. Now, Dave did not have to email me at all, um, and I really appreciate that he did. I think that was an enormous gesture, and I do respect his decision to decline. Um, sure, I'm bummed, and I emailed him back and told him, you know, thank you, and I'm really disappointed. If you change your mind, please let me know. Uh, and I also shared with him that the Amon Carter Museum, I live in Fort Worth, Texas, and about 10 minutes up the street is a wonderful museum that has a tremendous dedication to photography, and they have an exhibition right now of new acquisitions to their collection, and they actually have four 
four of Dave's prints that are all taken from Dialogue with Solitude. And I've been up there to see those probably four times. The museum has free admission, so if I'm in the neighborhood, I'll just park and run in and just go look at work. And they really are amazing. And what's, what's really cool, and I told him this in the email, is that they sit opposite a Robert Frank piece, which I thought was very cool. Now, I also understand because it's tough sometimes to talk about your own work, particularly when somebody wants to talk about work that was largely produced 40 years ago. So I completely understand and respect Dave's decision on that. Um, I'm, I'm disappointed, but I really appreciate him emailing me, and I thought I'd share that with you guys because I thought it was it was really nice of him to do. So anyway, uh, go check out the book. I will put a link for this in the show description. It is absolutely fantastic, as you have seen, and it is not super expensive, although it is a nicely bound edition, and it's also not super cheap. But uh, uh, check that out and until the next video if you guys enjoyed this video please remember to like it and share it with your friends and as always subscribe to the art of photography i've got some traveling i'm going to do this week and bring you guys along with because there's some cool stuff in the works and uh, subscribe so you'll know when those videos come out until the next video i'll see you guys then later